And if you search for um, class library design and MSDN, uh, you'll find a bunch of guidelines around when it makes sense to use structs and when it makes sense to use classes. And again, I like pretty much always, I like my structs to be immutable. And if you search for evil structs mutable or evil mutable structs, you'll find a bunch of people saying, if you start making structs that are mutable, bad stuff happens. In particular, weird stuff happens around boxing uh, and, and the like, particularly if you have, so let's, let's create some evil code because that's always fun. Um, so up here, I will create an evil struct and an interface uh, I evil with a muhaha method. Okay, so I'm going to give uh, my, whoops, Uh, give my muhaha method, which is just going to increment the value, and it implements i evil. And now, if I have a test. So I can have an evil struct and uh, we can assert that zero is evil dot value, then evil dot muhaha, and then it should be one. But between those two, I'm going to take a copy. Evil two equals evil. And after we've done that, evil2 should still have a value of 0 because we've only mutated one version. Yeah? Until we then say, tell you what, we'll use the interface instead of the value. Uh, I need to have a that bit, evil2. And suddenly, oh, things are broken because while it looks like both are doing the same thing, here we're taking a copy just of the reference instead of of the value. And this is just one example. So, so when we box, we have boxed the struct and we're mutating the value in the box when we call evil.muhaha. Um, so evil2 refers to the same box, so we end up getting the same mutated value. That's just one small, fairly simple example of how things can go wrong with mutable structs. Um, there are people who will swear that in some cases it's okay, so long as nothing within the struct itself mutates the values. If you just have fields that are really, uh, this can obviously be mutated because it's just a public field, then it's only when the caller starts mutating things that, uh, that it mutates and it's easier to reason about. I go with that to some extent, but generally I would just suggest stay immutable for structs wherever possible. Now, having mentioned all of this immutability and said it, it makes your programs easier to reason about um, and also much better for threading, uh, if you can rely on something not changing, then you can read it from all threads. There won't be race conditions, etc. So long as things are properly immutable, and if you search for Eric Lippert immutability, you'll ha find a whole series, including uh, some different things that Eric, different terms that Eric gives for immutability. Particularly, I'm fond of popsicle immutability, which is something that's mutable for a while until you freeze it, at which point it's immutable. <laughs> uh, it's great. I, I think that's entering computer science terminology. It could be that he took it from someone else, but uh, I think it's fabulous. Okay. Um, but yeah, once it's, once it's immutable, you can share that amongst other threads and you don't need to worry about, will I get race conditions? 